here on Vanderbinder Avenue in the Grove. You may have seen this place, but just not know what it is. But this is simply one of the most striking buildings in the entire St. Louis area. And when you finally come inside, it's beer, food, and fun. Three elements that the Rock Row Brewery offers anyone who's looking for a special and distinctly St. Louis experience. The goal of having a, a bright building like this is to catch their eye as, as they're passing by and convince them to you know pull into the parking lot and you know hang out for a bit. We came here kind of when it opened and it's been like super popular. I mean, it's a cool look on the outside with the container build. Got a really cool design, like the shipping container facade like really stands out. I mean, we're definitely a unique building. There's no other building like this in St. Louis. The shipping containers are bright, they're eye-catching, and they're kind of a nod to the industrial nature of this neighborhood. The Grove, previously known as the Manchester Strip, originally was built as a shopping district for St. Louis's working class. Despite it being a hot spot in the 1940s and 50s, it began declining after that, but now, thanks to the LGBTQ community, the neighborhood has seen a surge of new investments. Today, the Grove is one of the most vibrant, diverse, and eclectic areas in the city, and Rockwell has given the neighborhood one of its most unique gathering places in all of St. Louis. All right, Jonathan, where do we start? I don't know how to pour beer. I don't even know what to say to someone who's looking for a certain type of beer. So where would I begin, at least in terms of how to pour a beer? First, you want to get an appropriate glass. What kind of glass is that? Um, I don't know, tall one. I mean, some people call, <laughs> some people would call it a wine glass, and yeah. I'd say you're right. It looks like a wine it glass. It is a wine glass, but it's also a great glass for beer. Some guys have trouble drinking out of a wine glass, but you know, like, we'll, we'll let them deal with their own insecurities. Okay. I like the all-inclusiveness of it. Everyone comes here, and it just brings the community together. They have like non-alcoholic options too, so younger kids or friends who don't want to drink can come too. You are an expert. How did you know about all these beers? I mean, what kind of what kind of brain power does it take to know exactly what each one feels like, tastes like, the whole bit? I've spent a lot of time reading about beer brewing beer, mm. traveling, visiting other breweries, picking other brewers' brains, but also what I call intentional drinking. It's not just drinking beer, it's eating food, it's uh, drinking wine, it's you know like smelling things in nature as you're really picking apart like what it is that I'm smelling, uh, you know, being able to recall taste and flavor, uh, aroma memories, things that aren't directly in front of you at that time, mm -hmm. and being able to recall and put a name to it. That's the that's the hardest part about like describing beer. I smell something that smell is familiar, but I can't put a word on it. Being <laughs> able to put a word on it is really the hardest part. And you think about you know like what you want something to taste like, what you want it to smell like, how you want to feel, how you feel in a certain place at a certain time. Like you can contribute to that with a beer. But this glass here, the shape of it, what it's doing is it's capturing the aroma of the beer. If you're in a, a standard like shaker pint that just goes out like that, all of that aroma is just going out all around. Are you getting a beer to let everybody else smell or do you want to smell it? Great you want point. to direct those aromas right there to your nose. Mm. It also allows you to swirl the beer around in your glass. That's better to see whenever I actually have some beer. So let's get some beer. Kind of let it hit the side, right? Yeah, so you want to let it hit the side because you don't want it all foam, but you also don't want to have no foam. You want to have at least a finger or two of foam on there because those CO2 bubbles, like they're bursting. They are whoa, bringing the aroma <laughs> you got me. to your nose. <laughs> and so you swirl that around. That's releasing more gas, bringing the aroma out. You smell that, like there's a lot of pineapple, yes. citrus there. Very much so. Yeah. And so a glass like this is, you know, allowing that head to kind of like retain uh, within the glass, have some stability there. It's also giving that uh, aroma just right to your nose, swirl it around. 
and down the hatch. Taste it. <laughs> Repeat. It's an easy laid back atmosphere. It's not um, like any other restaurant you will attend to in St. Louis. We really want to make it a great experience for everyone and for everybody to like try the things that we're passionate about. How about if I uh, see if I can fill one up? All right, yeah. So I'm gonna grab, so I noticed you went over here and that's kind of how you wash them out, right? Yeah, what that's doing is like, if there was any sort of like lint on the polishing towel or any residual uh, uh, detergent, we've got that off. Okay, so you just kind of go down. Yep, just rinse it off like that. Like so, let me try that. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Little tilt, right? Yeah, little tilt, pull it all the way open. All the way. See if you. Uh... It looks like a milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> so there. I, what, did I waste good beer here? No, no, you just gotta wait a little. <laughs> you know, we've taken what was formerly a commercial equipment space and turned it into a modern beer hall. It's bright, it's airy, it's very communal. It's just a nice, it's nice seeing the part of the city kind of being revitalized. I think it brings a lot of people outside from the city in and kind of showcases the area. And it definitely draws people in, especially when the patio is full. People drive by and they're like, what's going on there? That looks like a good time. There are aspects of the brewing process all over this place. Like if you look at the wood here on the on the wall, that's actually scrap from the fooders, uh, from the fooder making process. The big oak tanks that we're doing mm -hmm. some of our long term fermentation and aging in. Most of our beer is moderate uh, to low alcohol, yes. and that's really because like what we're after is flavor. We're looking for a a social companion, not a, you know a way to get schnockered. <laughs> you know, like we want you to stay and have you know a few beers sure. and not just like. You know, two and then you're, you're walking funny on the way out the door. And whenever we're creating a beer recipe, like really what we're after is what I call, you know, like it's the grandma rule. You know, you eat a grandma's, what's the highest compliment you can give her? You ask for seconds. <laughs> that is true. And so. And that's what you're going yeah, for. Yeah, you know, like we never want to create a beer here where it's like, hey, that, that was great. It was nice that I tried it. I'm never going to have it again. Right. I'm a beer geek, and and like I will rattle on for as long as you'll let me about <laughs> about styles and stuff like that, and, and get into the minutia. Some people like that, some people don't. Our job is to read the room. What we really want to break down is that like connoisseur mentality. We don't want them to be intimidated whenever they come to the bar to order a beer. Honestly, like I love that we've you know kind of created a big tent here. Where Just nail it. Exactly. Nail it. <laughs> Just a little heavy on the yeah, it's a uh, on heavy, the pour. A little heavy. You know, I got yeah. that, these little sausage figures here yeah. kind of uh, push it a little too hard. What made you say, with the competition, with an Anheuser Busch, how could we sit here and, and brew our own beer and and do it here in St. Louis. Part of it is this place. You're right, there, there are more breweries in the United States than ever before. And there is a wonderful, robust brewing community here, whether that's AB, whether it's places like Perennial and Schlafly and Side Project. And so what we wanted to do was not just create good beer. That's not enough. We needed to create an experience. We wanted to draw people into the brewery. And so whenever you come in here, it's not just the beer. 
it's the food, it's the music, it's the vibe, it's the, you know, the aesthetic of the place, it's the way that you feel when you're here. We, we want to share our passion for beer. We want to make people care about what they're consuming. You know, like there's so many different places that people could go and have a beer or whatever else there is that they want to drink. Uh, we want to make a case for why it should be Rockwell and to give them the best quality beer that we can possibly produce. Jonathan, I've been all over the place on trying to get this thing done. I've got a feeling. You got, got a feeling, feeling this is going to be it? Yeah. All right. Do you want to run through the fundamentals one more time? You got it. Let's give it a shot. All right. You know what? But there first, go. I got to wash the glass. That's right. Yep. Right? Limber up. Limber up. 45 degree angle. Yep. Hit it. All the way open. All the way open. Turn it up. Yep. Slowly turn it up. Let it go, right? Not bad. Let me see. Let me see how it does. You're the man. That works. Beautiful. That works. I'll take Cheers. it. Cheers. Cheers to you. <laughs>